before we discuss the topic that was given to us, I would like to introduce my members first. First, Mr. Josh Aaron Inutan, followed by Ms. Anna Chris Sumambot, then followed by Ms. General Dilag, and lastly, Ms. Chin Rose Agimut. Kinds of study. Scope and the limitation. And the definition of terms. What is the significance of the study? From the title itself, significance contains the importance and benefits of the study. Significance of the study divided into two parts. The first part would be the introductory statement. Introductory statement is a short introduction to this part of your research. It can state as this part of the research contains the beneficiaries of the research. And the second one is the presentation of the beneficiaries. There are various ways of presenting the beneficiaries of the research. We have methods of presenting beneficiaries. First is the hierarchical method. Hierarchical considering the positions of the beneficiaries. Starting from the highest position and to the next level lower to that position in another level until you reach the last level which is usually if not the student and its researcher. Example, beneficiaries can start with the institution or school, the administrator, teachers, parents, students, and the last one is the researcher. Let's move on to our next method. According to the importance would mean that who would benefit moves, it is the student, primarily on top. The second one would be the parents. Next would be the teachers, administrator, and last one would be the institution. After knowing and listing your beneficiaries, whether it's through hierarchical by position or by importance, each beneficiary would contain a short description of the specific benefits of the research to the beneficiary. For our hierarchical arrangement would be the institution under that would be a brief discussion and what would be the benefits of the researcher for that particular institution. And after that institution, it would be the teachers under that aspect and what would be the benefit of your research to the teachers. The last one is students. What would be the benefit of your research to the students? It can be one to two sentences. The part of this research may be written into two paragraphs. One paragraph for the scope of the study and another is for the delimitation of the study. It is more than enough to cover the inclusion and exclusion of the research. First, the scope of the study. Discuss the impact of the study. Who affect your study and how will those affect the person involved in your study? We need brief discussion about your study, its impact and benefits, and this will be the introductory statement for the scope of your study. Under the scope, we may also discuss the evaluation of population. The population is the general and overall total of your respondents. We are going to describe who are your respondents in terms of population in your study. Next is the research timeline. Discusses the time when you started your research and the time you plan to end your study. We should be able to specifically and strictly the schedule and date of your implementation, distribution, tabulation, and analysis of your data. This will be fit into your discussion of your research timeline under the scope of the study. The limitation of the study narrow the scope of the research. We can also include something method that you use in order to choose the respondents of your study. Because if you are going to segregate the respondents of the study, you will have to discuss how you segregated them, how you choose them, and second, how will you able to come up with the number of respondents yet to talk from the population of the study. Next, instrument and research method that is used in the study. Another one is the time limitations of your study. Lastly, is the financial resources. And you have to put this rationalization under your delimitation the study. The simplest function of this part of your research is that specifically indicates on presence 
that function or how the word or term was used in the research. And this is different and not the same as getting the definition from a dictionary because there are various definitions in the dictionary that will not be consistent or relevant with how we used it in the research. That's why the term used today is operational definition of variables or ODV because first, the word operational refers to how the word or term was used in the research. Next, variables are elements critical to research. These are the focus of the research and reflected in the research title. In writing definition of terms, we need to write a short introductory statement. This briefly states the content of the definition of terms. Second, write the words or term technical would you like to include. And also, make sure that the variables, dependent and independent, are included in the definition. Using terms in the definition of terms should be arranged in alphabetical order. Next, the terms should be aligned and indented with the first indention of the introductory statement. Lastly, the term should end immediately with a period, even without a line. It is accepted but make sure you end it with a period. Do not make a very lengthy definition of your terms. One and a half page is more than enough to make the definition of terms. We do not need to fill and overflow the definition of terms with different technical terms. Only those that are significant and relevant to your research. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something from our discussion. Bye! 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 Bye. 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 Bye.